a good near of Shabbos to everybody of the Westmont Shul and our friends. This week is Parshas Vayishlach. We're less than a week away from Hanukkah. And there's some very uh, important messages, very relevant messages in this week's Parsha that we should be thinking about. In this week's Parsha, Yaakov sends messengers out to Esau in an effort to make peace. And he describes his experiences in the house of Lavan. And Yaakov says, Im Lavan Garti. I have dwelled with Lavan. And I waited, and I, that's what took the last 20 years. So Rashi uh, explains what it means, Im Lavan Garti. So Rashi says, Garti Bigamachia Taryag. The word Garti has the same letters as Taryag, which is the numerical value of the 613 mitzvahs. So Klomar, Rashi means to say. In other words, when Yaakov said, Im Lavan Garti, Im Lavan Harasha Garti, with Lavan the wicked I lived, Vitaryag Mitzvah Shamarti. And I kept the 613 mitzvahs. And then it says, and I didn't learn from his evil ways. So the Zara Kaidish, Rabbi Tali Robschitz, Rabbi Tali Rob, the Robschitzer, asks a very obvious question. The Pusik says, Im Lavan Garti. So Rashi says, well, Garti is the Gamachia Taryagya 613. So then he should have said, so I kept all 613 mitzvahs, but Rashi says, repeats, Im Lavan Garti. He repeats it over. He, he says, Klomar, in other words, Im Lavan Garti, with Lavan I, I, I was living with, Vitari and I kept 630 mitzvahs. Why does Rashi have to repeat Im Lavan Garti? That's part of the Pasuk. He just should have said, Klomar, Vitari, it, it, it's Gematria 613, and I kept the 613 mitzvahs. Why the repetition? And also this the word klomar means say, I'm trying to say something deeper even in the words im lavan garti. Well, what's deeper understanding? I lived with lavan. So that's the kasha that he asks. And he answers it based on a teaching in Pirkei Yavos. In Pirkei Yavos, in the fourth chapter, it says, Ezeu Chacham, who is a wise person, Hello made me call Adam, who learns from every person, as it says in Tehillim, me call melamdai hiskalti. From all my teachers, I became smart. So the question is, how is it possible to learn from everybody? If you're going to learn from everybody, you're going to learn from wicked people. And we don't want to learn from wicked people. And also the Pasuk says, Mikol Melamdai, from all my teachers. It doesn't say Mikol Adam. The, the Mishnah says you should learn from every person. He didn't say from every person. The Pasuk doesn't say every person. It says Mikol Melamdai, all my teachers. So how do we understand this? So the Rav Chisir gives a classic answer. He says, yes, a person must learn from everybody. He must learn from the actions of a Russia too, has to learn from the actions of a Russia as well. And what do you learn from a Russia? Well, you learn from a Russia, for example, it says in Proverbs that the wicked can't sleep unless they've done their evil. They lose sleep unless they've caused someone to have a downfall. Why? Because their drives are so strong, they're insatiable. And because they want to achieve what they have, they can't sleep until they have what they have. And therefore, they will resort to the most clever ideas. People coming up with scams that are so clever. Halavai, as we say, if they only would have used their, their cleverness for good things, you can imagine what it could do, but they don't. And that's the whole point. That we understand that the people, if you really want something, people, you know, they could sit on the internet for hours and hours till the middle of the night. What can I learn from that? I can learn that I could learn Torah till the middle of the night. I could learn that I can't sleep until I've accomplished a certain thing. 
if you have to do the daf yomi and it's, you didn't get around to it and it's late, the Russia doesn't sleep till he has all his desires taken care of. How can I sleep if I don't have all my desires taken care of? That's the way it works. And that's me call Adam from every person, meaning from every type of uh, effort that you see that to accomplish their goals. And that's what it means. Me call Melamdai, he's scouty. I try to only get the lesson of the learning from all of them. And with this, he explains beautifully the Pasuk in Tehillim, the right in the beginning. Tehillim says, Ashre ha'ish asher lo halach batsas rishayim. Fortune is the person who did not go after the advice of the wicked, etc., etc. Uba moshev leitzim lo joshev. He didn't sit with the, uh, with the mockers. Ki im betoros Hashem chavtso. But rather... The fortunate person desires the Torah of Hashem and works hard in the Torah. So the obvious question is, these seem to be polaric extremes from one side to the other. That, you know, we're talking about, you got the complete Sadiq, fortunate guy who's, who's not a complete Russia, but rather complete Sadiq. So like, like what, what's the point of the extremes over here? So he explains very well because of this. What does it mean? Ashrei Aish, fortunate the person who did not go after the ways of the Rishayim. Shalom Alech bin Rishayim, except for the good. For the good, he did go with the Rishayim, for Torah Hashem. And he wants to learn tricks from them. And to learn the good from the wicked, he did, but not to learn the bad. And that's the point of what the Pasuk is saying. Forge is a person who doesn't go with the wicked. Ki'im. Except, but only I go with the wicked for the purpose of Torah Hashem Chavzo. I want to learn Torah from them. Not from them, but how I should be able to learn Torah. And how to learn Torah day and night. Yes, a person should stay away from the Rishayim, except for the purpose to learn from the Rasha. But I'm cautioning, learn from a distance. Not to exactly be with them. There's a purpose for everything in this world. Yaakov. Yaakov had to go down to love him. And he's wondering, why in the world do I have to live with this love him? This Russia, this terrible fellow. We know that love him changed the terms of the deal with Yaakov a hundred times. We don't have to review all the craftiness of Lavan, how terrible he was. Why did Yaakov have to go through this? The answer is Yaakov was a tzaddik, no question about it. But he hadn't, he hadn't been involved, quote unquote, in the real world raising a family, making Parnassah. And therefore, there's what to learn from the wicked. There's what to learn from the wicked. Yaakov Lavan was relentless. He wouldn't stop at anything until he reached his goal. He would never give up. And he tried it one way, Yaakov, was making money, he'd switch the terms of the deal. Didn't work that way, he switched the terms of the deal. He kept switching the terms of the deal. He would not accept defeat. And even when Yaakov ran away, Lovin chases after him. And, then, and only when Hashem stopped him, did he stop with his plans. Yaakov learned a lot from Esau. Sometimes we're in situations we don't want to be in. And we're surrounded by people who do not exemplify Torah's greatest values. And we may wonder, why do we have to be around these people? You have to, you have to see what virtue could I pull out? They're using it for not so good. How about if I use it for good? My Rosh Hashiva of Gifter, Zechron Levracha, always remember he told this story. Rosh Hashiva, you know, had to do fundraising for the yeshiva too. And he made a fundraising call to a very wealthy man in Cleveland that owned a lumber business. 
and he wanted to make an appointment. And the fellow said, listen, I'll tell you, I'm a busy man. I don't have much time for you. The only time I can have an appointment for you is at 6.30 in the morning, come to my house, and then I'll see you. And so it was. The Rosh Shiva got up early, and he had to go from Wycliffe, Ohio, to Cleveland, Ohio. So it's like a half an hour drive to be at this fellow's place to discuss the yeshiva. And, Rosh Shiva, and the Rosh Shiva said, look at the lesson. This guy's a businessman. He can't do it, see anything else. He's up at six in the morning. He has his breakfast. He's out the door by seven. And he's busy with his business all day long. And that's why he's successful. And he told us, Bachrim, he's only making money. You're making oil and haba. Look how lazy we are compared to him. We have to be at least use the same effort as he uses. That's what you learned from the fellow. The fellow was not a religious guy at all. I'm not saying it was a Russia, but, but you can learn from people. There's so much to learn. And that's what Yaakov was telling Esav. He says, Im Lavan Garti. I stayed with Lavan and Taryag Mitzvah Shamarti. He's saying, why? He's saying, because I was with Lavan, not in spite of the fact I was with Lavan, I kept the 613 mitzvahs. But because I was with love, and that's the Klomar. It's not, I was with love and, 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 and Nebuch, I was delayed. And there's no, I was with love. And because I was with love, and that improved my ability to do 630 mitzvahs. Because I learned how to overcome my Yetzirah. From the wickedness of love, and I learned how to be careful in my Shmira Samitzvahs. And he's selling lace, Ace of, don't think you can overpower me. Don't think you can influence me. I will see from you what you do, and that will make me stronger in my Yiddishkeit as well. And that's the whole idea. You can always learn from the Yetzirah. We have Yetzirahs, and we should know the Yetzirah is relentless. He never gives up. No matter how many times he tries and he fails, he gets back and tries again. This is such a powerful message for us to understand. We want to be like Yaakov. We want to be righteous. And we're often put in situations we don't want to be in. And instead of bemoaning our situation and why you have to be in work where, it, where the ideology is so much different than Torah ideology, why we have all these different things, you have to know it's for one purpose, learn from it. Every experience you have, it's meant to enhance your avodah Hashem. That's what it's all about. And a second vort, from the, from the Rupshitzer. When Yaakov found out that Esav's planning to kill him, it says, Vayira Yaakov me'od Vayetzerlo. Vayira Yaakov me'od. Yaakov was very afraid. Vayetzerlo, and it distressed him. And he was distressed. So what's the repetition? If you're afraid, you're distressed. So Rashi gives a shot. He was afraid he might get killed or he's distressed he might kill others. There's all kinds of shot. But the rupture says, Mom is the most posh shot. Vayira Yaakov Ma'od. Yaakov was very much afraid. And when he realized he was so afraid from Esau, that distressed him. He says, what a shameful thing that I'm afraid from something other than Hashem. How could I have slipped to be so afraid of Esau. As the Chovas Havavas tells us, that he tells a story with a Chosid. It's in the 10th uh, gate of uh, the Shar Avas Hashem, Perak Vav, chapter 6, of a Chosid, of the God fearing ones. And they find him sleeping in the desert. And somebody goes over with a caravan where he says, Aren't you afraid to sleep in the desert? Wild animals can kill you, this and that. So he said, he said, I'm more embarrassed if I would be afraid from anything other than Hashem. How could I be afraid of anything besides Hashem? So I'm afraid to sleep because the animals, well, I should be afraid of Hashem, other things, that's, that's nonsense. 
Of course they can kill you. Of course, but you got to realize what is it that you have to really be careful about. That's like in last week's Parsha, we mentioned the Parsha class when Yaakov put the uh, rocks around him. When he lied down and the Rashi says he put rocks around to save him from chaya rolls, from wild animals. So the famous question is asked, what do you mean? He put rocks around his head. What about the rest of his body? Why they must keep the rest of his body? The answer is, who are the real highest rows? The wild animals is the eight Sahara. And the eight Sahara wants to fool you in the mind. So you put the rocks around his head as if to say, I have to watch my head. And if I watch my head, Hashem will protect me and the rest of my body will be fine. And that's a very powerful message. Yaakov, what, what distressed him? The fact he was afraid. That's what distressed him. How could I be afraid of anything other than Hashem? And that's the way it is with all Midos. All Midos, they come from Hashem. And if we use the Midos properly, that's good. But sometimes the Midos, as they say, fall into the wrong place. Fear is an amazing thing. It's a Mida and we should have a certain fear of Hashem. Not fear he's going to punish us. We already talked to this many times. But the, the awesome power that Hashem has should overwhelm us. And that's the only thing you should be afraid of. That's the only thing. Just learned in the Gemara class this week. Everything's in God's hands except Yerushalayim. That's the only thing I should really be afraid of. Dev Yerushalayim. All right, what about the animals? You know, if your Yerushalayim is in place, everything else will be in place. Don't do foolish things. But everything will be in place. So what happens? What happens when this Mita is in the wrong place? That means it needs to be saved. You know, there's, there's things that belong in the right place and somehow for whatever reason, they're in the wrong place. So what happens? So Yaakov realizes, hey, how come I'm afraid of this? I should not be afraid of this. There's a little weakness on my level of my Yerushalayim. And now for this minute, I'm afraid of Asa. For that minute, I guess Hashem wants me to take that feeling and multiply it a million times more from my feelings towards Hashem. Same idea as the rupture said with your enemies. When your meter goes in the wrong place because our Yetzirah has streaked us, there's still what to benefit from it. Because when now I'm so afraid of Asa, and Yaakov, oy, oy, I'm so, how can I be afraid of Esau? So why is Hashem doing this? So I should get a little better understanding how much I should be afraid of Hashem. That's, the, that's what he learned. So the Yaakov is consistent throughout his life. Hashem creates beautiful meadows. Hashem, in all our meadows, in Chesed, to have chesed, but you know, chesed in the wrong place can be terrible things. Chesed to yourself can cause the worst of eros. And then you got to learn that, you know what? I really can do a lot of chesed, but I got to put it in the right place. It's the same thing. You can learn from lava. You can learn from your mistakes. And the mistake always says, look at the great energy I have if I only would have put it in the right place. When you see the Russia, you can learn from outside. Oh, I see how he behaves. Let me take that good part of what he has, the determination, and let me use it for good. Can imagine how good it would be. And then in my own self, when I've used a meat in the wrong place, I can say, see, see how much I could be afraid. I should use that for fear of a Kaddish Baruch Very, very powerful messages. Very powerful messages. So let's go to our current events, which I always like to go to, and I'm sure that's what you really want to hear. <laughs> so, first of all, where did Yaakov learn all this from? The base Lavan, in Lavan Garti, the house of Lavan, which we've said often, was the very first white house. 
It's the White House. And through his connection with the White House, he learned a lot. Those of us who are following what's going on in the drive to be, to live in the White House, let's see what the people, and I'm not classifying people necessarily as Rishoyim, although many of them are. I know there's a big machlokas amongst people who are the Rishoyim. I'm not going to go there. But what do we see? We see to what ends the Democrats have gone to for power. They've gone to the ends of the earth to destroy their country, literally, for power. They were behind the greatest election scheme that's known in history. It's all coming out, but of course, all of uh, all of you just listen to the mainstream fake news media, so you don't hear any of this. And no matter how many times, four years ago when they lost, when they lost to Trump, they were not they were not it. They did not accept it because they felt he was wrong. He not, and you know what? They didn't even feel he was wrong. They just couldn't stand losing. And they had a win. So they came up with all kinds of lies and just said lies through their teeth. And they never gave up every time. You know, Trump is better than the cat who has nine lives. They didn't give up. They tried this, they tried that. Everything came up and they would go another commission, another this, a Mueller report, the, uh, uh, the House committee, the Senate committee. And every time, and, and they would lie and they would go to worse lies and this. And then they even told to try to impeach it. It all doesn't work. They're not going to give up. They never gave up. And they never gave up, even if they knew they were going to lose this election, which it's clear that they lost. But we'll find a way to cheat in the most brazen ways. If you still believe that there's no evidence, then I guess you're looking at the wrong news channels. On the other hand, so, so what can we learn from that? It's a lot to learn, not to be cheaters, but to never give up. They lost, you lost, but no, 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 we, we're gonna still win. We're not gonna give up our hopes. How many times have we lost to our Sahara? Do we give in? But now let's look at it in the other way, because I wanna get to the White House. Look on the other hand, Trump, What's Zrizus you can learn from him? Alacrity. He has filled over 200 judicial seats and no president did. All the presidents left so many vacancies. He's, 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 he, people are saying he lost. He's still filling vacancies. He's still continuing to try to make peace. Nobody has done as much as he does. He's taught the world, you know, there's an establishment that says everything has to take a long time because that way they give themselves perpetual jobs. And as an outsider, he said, you don't have to spend all this time and waste all this money. And he's got a lot done, a lot done in a little bit of time. Four years, he did a lot. They did not want him to have a wall. They put every wall against the wall and somehow he built that wall. He found a way. He found a way to do it. There's Jesus and everything that it's never been in the history of a pandemic that you find a cure in less than a year. Rabbi say, you got to realize as much as you either like him or hate him, there's a lot to be makar to this fellow. There's a lot to learn from this fellow. Because of him, there is greater chances of peace in Eretz Yisrael. Of course, it's HaKadosh Baruch who is using him as a shaliach, of course, but we have to be makar tov. The makar tov that only... 300,000 Americans died. They're saying, oh, he let somebody, but we all know the truth. Most of them died because the democratic governors sent the older people to die, just like in Canada. So they can exploit people, have people die for their political gains. And Trump said, no, no, you gotta keep the country going. You gotta not be afraid. And even he got coronavirus and he got out of that too. 
never give up, can do attitude. There's a lot to learn from that. Now, not everything he does is righteous, but he wasn't afraid. He's not afraid to appoint a third justice to rile up the opposition so much. But you know, if he can do one more, get one more. More people will be more involved in trying to win the presidency. But no, and now when they said he lost and you only got like a month to resolve this and you don't have the FBI, you don't have the CIA, you have nobody helping you. So you know what he's teaching us? If nobody's for me, who's gonna be for me? I gotta be for me. And Rabbi Sai, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now that this is the month of Kislev. It's the month of miracles. We see what this Biden is putting together here. It's a churban. It's going to be a destruction for America, a destruction for the world. It is so clear what's going on over here. He's in cahoots with China. Of course, we believe in Hashem, but we have to keep our eyes open and see what's happening here. And to realize Hashem is putting all the chess pieces in place for Chas V'Shalom, either the greatest sakana for the Jewish people that we've ever had or the greatest Yeshua that we've ever had. And Hashem allows us to be, uh, what do you call it? Uh, viewers we don't have to we don't have to be hanging around trump we don't have to hang around the democrats but you see you could see the rishayim or we'll just call call adam in what they're doing we could see how people as much as the polls say that the favorability level of the news media is low it's only an eight, like a 15% approval rating. Yet they believe what they're saying. They're fed lies and they believe it. And even when the lies prove to be lies, oh, it doesn't matter. Do we fall into that same trap ourselves? Do we fall in that trap? So look look at how much they're oh, moisture and effort. With, the, with these people, with these, they call patriots. They're trying to have to find all this evidence in such a little bit of time. And they're being all threatened. Their mom is being threatened with their lives. You dare try to up overturn, they're using the word overturn this election. What do you mean overturn? After, after the cheating that went on, that has changed millions of votes and everybody knows it. They know it's flagrantly going against the constitution. But it's like, you dare try to do something, we'll kill you. Trump says, I don't care. One thing you could learn, he's courageous. I don't care what, if you like him or not, he's got courage, his family's got courage. Those who are supporting him, the lawyers back out because their lives are threatened. And he doesn't need this. He could live a comfortable life. You're going to say, well, he's doing it for God. I don't care what he's doing it for. If you tell me there's nothing to learn from him, then you haven't learned anything from this week's Parsha. Im love on Garti. I lived in the White House. And because of that, I learned how to do mitzvahs. So you don't just look at the politics and talk politics to talk politics. You look at the current events and say, I'm love on Garti. I'm living with the White House every day for four years. The world has lived with the White House. And you're going to live it longer. And the only question is, you know, what did you learn from it in your avodas Hashem? How is your mitzvah of servants better by following all this? And finally, we have this virus. And what are we seeing? How everyone's seeing how careful you have to be. I'm not getting into the debate if it's necessary or not. I'm not going to go there. 
But what do you hear every day from the White House or from Parliament, whatever? Do what you can. Be strict. Be machmir. To not catch this virus. Even though the odds, if you catch it, if you're 80 years old, then there's a 95% chance you'll survive. Only 5% you'll die, even if you're 80. But don't take chances, because if you catch that virus, what do we have to do in our shul? How many hoops we have to go through to be able to be open? Because maybe catch the virus. And if you don't do the precautions, people get angry at you. So I want to ask you, I've, we said this many times, virus, a virus, a virus are sins. All of you are so careful to not catch the virus. Did you learn anything about catching a virus? In Wavangarti, we're staying with the White House. The White House and the virus, all together wrapped into one, this whole Parsha. How careful you have to be, this, that. What are we learning from this? And this, I believe, is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is putting this all together because we're coming to a very momentous time in the history of the world. When Yaakov met Esav, he didn't know what what was going to happen afterwards? He could have got wiped out. It's the mortal enemy of Esau that can come from two fronts. Miad Esau, Miad Ochi, the Esau who hates me, or he comes like a brother trying to make me assimilate. Yaakov knows this is, this is the Jewish people could get wiped out in this parsha. What's the opening line? I stayed with Lavan and I learned how to do better mitzvahs from being with Lavan. And then when I was afraid for a minute, I was so distressed that I was afraid. What's going on here? Is this just a soap opera to enjoy, to watch a soap opera? A live virtual soap opera? Or is Hashem really taunting us? How many more parshas does he have to tell us? What's going on over here? Each Jew, Yaakov, we're to say, yeah, we have to say, in love on Garti, I lived with the White House. And he lived with the White House for 20 years. We're living with the White House. And what, Vayira, and we're afraid, like Yaakov was, but Vayetzelo, it should distress him that he, it distressed him that he was afraid. Is it distressing you that you're afraid? Are you learning something about what is Hashem? Because you're afraid. Hashem, I said last week already, Hashem has set up all the pieces. You know, after I gave the drush last week, after I gave the drush, I got a phone call in the office. I usually don't pick up the phone. I got a call. Remember last week, I was telling people they can come to the shul privately. Like I see Earl over here, the Tzaddik Earl off to the left. Earl, I'm about, what, 30 feet away from you? Yeah. And he daven chakras every day this week, Earl. Yashukoyach. And some others also came. After that, after I gave the drush, I got a call. I never pick up the phone from the office. I thought maybe it's my wife. I get a call. A lady calls me and says, it says, you know, it is um, my husband is having your sight and he needs to say Kaddish. Can he come to your shul? So I said, ma'am, I, 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 don't, don't you go to regular shul? She says, I live down south. They closed the shuls. There's only 10 in the shul. And my husband can't get into the minion. So can I go? So I was thinking, I mean, on the one hand, I'd really like to help them. But you're hearing, the, they're saying, you know, you shouldn't let people from Toronto go to York region and this and that. And I'm thinking of, of the people in our shul that feel so safe and protected. Because we're like one cohort. As I mentioned last week, we're one cohort. So I'm really, really sorry. I wish I could help you. But if, if I let your husband come in, people in my shul could feel very uncomfortable. And then maybe people in my shul won't come. 
So I'm really sorry. I can't help you. And I really felt bad. And then I said, you know, look how fortunate we are that the czar din of only 10 and the law really is the way the government understands the law, only 10 in the synagogue, not even two or three minions in different places. You understand what kind of terrible czar din? There only 10 can be in a shul. You can't put a lot of people. It's in the winter now. You can't have a lot of outside minyanim. And Thornhill was spared for some reason. We have this chus that we still at 30%. I just get the call from the lady. Her husband wants to come to Shul and he can't come to Shul. And we have people in Ashul who can come to Shul. Private Shul. I'll even up the ante. You're gonna say, well, you know, I want to daven at the same time the Shul davens. You know, we have two other empty Shuls down the hallway. You want to daven with the Shul at 6.30? I'll open up the Sephardi Shul. I'll open up the Mariah room. You could have a private shul and daven together with us. Maybe we should think for a minute. Maybe we should be distressed over our fear. I'm not telling you to take risks that are unnecessary. But to tell me that you're afraid to daven in the shul alone, you should be distressed over that fear. We should be distressed over many fears. Distressed. I'm afraid I, I might lose my job. I'm afraid I won't have Parnassa. Lots of distress. Lots of distress. We have to be distressed over our fears. We have to learn from the, the, from the people that we're being exposed to. They're not afraid. They don't care. They're not going to stop. They're going to get their goal. They're going to get what they want, no matter what. And if they fail once, they're going to try again and again. And that's what we have to learn, no matter how hard the restrictions are on us to keep the shul open. And who knows if there's going to be more Xardins in York region. I, it's mamish, uh, uh, I don't understand. We're already coming up to almost 200 in York region. They still haven't done anything. Baruch Hashem, let's pray. But Hashem is putting all the puzzle pieces in the place and who knows what Hashem has to mind. But I'm telling you, it's Hanukkah. And the Hashmonoim had plenty to be afraid of. But they fought knowing they could die. And I'm not asking anybody to die over here. But we forget about coming to Shul. What about our mitzvah observance? What about upping the ante a little bit? It is Hanukkah time. It's a time to study more. There's not going to be a lot of Hanukkah parties. We have to look at our Avodah Hashem and look at others. Look, look at Trump. He's not sleeping at all because he has to make sure he's going to get elected. And why are we sleeping so much? There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. It could very well be don't be shocked. Listen, I made the prediction in 2016, six months before. Do not be shocked if Trump is inaugurated. Because you people know so little about United States civics. I'm an American, so I had to learn civics. They don't teach civics in America anymore. They're teaching the country to be destroyed. He just has to win three, not even a court battle. At the end of the day, the electoral college gets decided by the state legislature. And if the state legislatures are allowed to say, we do not certify the results, then no electoral votes are sent to Washington. And every state where the cheating went on is a Republican controlled state legislature. All they have to do is one vote and say, we're not sending any electoral votes to Washington. If neither one gets 270, I'm not gonna get you into a whole physics, uh, civics lesson. It goes to the House of Representatives, but not by the number of people in the House, but by the state's representatives in the House. And there's 50 states and most of them are Republican. So if there's not enough electoral votes, 
the, the House of Representatives has 50 votes, Trump will get elected. The president gets elected there. The vice president gets elected in the Senate. This can all happen. Can you imagine if in two weeks the state legislatures don't accept these votes? Do you have any idea what upheaval is going to happen in America? But then again, Trump has done a lot to be a shliach unwittingly of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. There is so much on the line here. I don't know what it's, it's all in Hashem's hands. So then what can, but I'm just telling you, people, you think it's all over. He should give up. He's an idiot. No, the only way he's going to do this is because all his effort, he's bombish nonstop effort. And his life is being threatened and all the lawyers' lives are being threatened. But you know what? They are thinking that they are patriots. And I want to know, are we patriots for Hashem? And how much effort do we make? This is the time we got to put up. I just got a letter yesterday from Rabbi Ox that's going out from all the Rabbonim. Hot off the presses. It's mainly in Hebrew. I'll send it with you with the drush. And I'll just paraphrase. It's in Hebrew. I, but in English says, basically say, we are now standing in a very difficult time. And to our sadness, even with our calculations, that we thought we got out of the bad time, it seems that things are getting back. We're having a second wave again. And because of this terrible times, it's a time to strengthen ourselves in the three pillars of Torah. And if we strengthen ourselves, we'll get the mercy of Hashem, Torah. God forbid, we shouldn't allow these times to be a weakness in our Torah, but rather we have to strengthen ourselves in this Torah in a greater way. And in Avoda, to strengthen ourselves in prayer and to understand what to respect a shul and to give proper uh, respect and prayer and to not talk during davenings and to really supplicate before our Kaddish Baruch and pour our hearts before Hashem who could take away all bad decrees from us. And finally, Gemilis Chasod and to make all the efforts to give as much stuck and chesed as much as possible. And then the last part, they brought in Hebrew, but they translated the last part in English. And at a time like this, we urge everyone to do what they can to keep the virus out of our community. Now, these are all the rabbis who all live down south. Officials have told us that shopping malls and big box stores like Costco and Walmart are super spreaders of the virus. We therefore recommend avoiding those places as much as possible. One should also refrain from attending private kiddushim, which are often held in contained areas. It's talking about private kiddushim where everybody's hanging around and breathing over everybody. They don't know what it means to have a safe kiddush like we have in the shul where everybody's got their masks and 10 feet away from everybody. This is from the, our leading rabbis are telling us it's a terrible time. Businesses are crumbling. Small businesses are crumbling. It's a terrible kitschrug. And for those of us who say, I could just stay in my house and everything's fine. No! We got to be involved in Torah, voting, and so learn from Yaakov. And if we have a fear, we should be distressed over that fear. And it could be a fear of changing a bad meter, a fear of, of, of ex taking on a new mitzvah that you haven't taken on. Don't let the apparent lull lull you into thinking that we're not in serious times. And there's only one thing to be afraid of. If we let Hashem down. Hashem gave us this great blessing, this time of Corona, to learn so much about Avodah Hashem. Let us fulfill the Pasuk of Yaakov. Im lavan garti v'tariyag mitzvah shamarti. I lived with the White House and I've learned how to be a better Jew. I've learned how to do the 613 mitzvahs. I'll be alacritous. I'll never give up until I get that goal. And our goal is much more important than those politicians' goals. We're not looking for the White House. We're looking for Mashiach. Mashiach will only come when we do all our 613 mitzvahs. And it could be very well for this purpose. The fear of the coronavirus 
is to let us know how much we should fear HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That virus will not kill you. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will. And if you're making so much care that it shouldn't kill you, the virus, but you're not making the same care of disappointing Hashem, and you need guidance to understand what that means, then you've missed the message. If you're afraid of one little breath, I can't go, I can't touch the table. I'm going to die if I touch the table. No. And maybe to touch something on Moksa and Shabbos, are you as much afraid? Learn from that. Learn from your fear. And make that fear be a fear of Hashem. Chas I don't want to go one iota over what Hashem has said. And if we have that, we'll have a good solution. Because at the end of the day, Esav hugged Yaakov. He kissed Yaakov. And Yaakov was able to return to Eretz Yisrael. Hashem should help us. That we should learn the message and return to Eretz Yisrael with Mashiach Tzikenu Bimheru Amen.